All right, in Fox Family and Health, there's so many actually miss out there when it comes to childbirth and this morning we're helping you decipher fact from fiction and Tiffany Hartnett she's a doula and childbirth educator and local rally coordinator and Kate Harrell with Central Texas Birth Network chapter she's a leader there <laughs> are both here to talk about some of these myths a lot of yes. times when uh, women are pregnant or before they get pregnant they're thinking about it they hear so many things from their friends they hear so many things out there exactly. but it's not always the correct information no, right absolutely um, we're going to talk about some different things that women just misunderstand about what can change for them in, in labor. First, um, you're often told you can't eat and drink during labor. Right. And that is not true. The evidence actually says there's no harm in eating and drinking. And um, that information is based on hospital research from the 1940s when they were worried, doctors were worried you would aspirate if you had to have general anesthesia during your childbirth. Okay. A lot's changed since the 1940s, and they've actually had a new study in the 90s which um, determined that you're more likely to be struck by lightning than aspirate during a C-section. Okay, so if you're hungry and you're in labor, you should just go ahead and eat, not eat. ice chips only. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so very hospitals nice. need to revise those policies. All right, here's another one. Big baby is a reason to be induced because a lot of women worry that if the baby's going to be too big, then they should go ahead and induce labor, correct? Right. right. This is a frequent myth. Um, and and the question really here that we have to address is, what is a big baby? Right. And there's no standard that doctors follow to um, indicate what baby is too large to be birthed vaginally. Okay. So what happens often is that women at the end of their pregnancies receive an ultrasound and if it looks like the baby might be too big, whatever that means mm -hmm. to the doctor, uh, the doctor will prescribe a elective C-section or a induction. And um, research has just consistently shown that prescribing an induction it does not offer beneficial health outcomes for the mother or the baby. So we just go as long as you can until the baby's ready to come out, correct? Yes. yes. Okay, That's what, that would be the best policy if you could do it. All right, right, next one, you must be connected to monitors the whole time in your own labor. Right, again, the evidence does not support this. First of all, when you're, con when you're connected all the time, mm -hmm. you, uh, it causes two problems. One is you are less likely to cope well with your pain of, okay. of the contractions because you can't move around freely. And two, um, you're not letting gravity do its important role, helping baby come down. So the evidence does not support being, being continuously monitored with an electronic fetal monitor. Okay, and last but not least, once a C-section, always a c-section because a lot of women say once they've had one that's what they're going to do every time around right right, right. right. and this isn't not necessarily true okay um, ACOG which is the American Congress of Obstetricians and Gynecologists actually recommend that uh, eligible women have the opportunity to attempt a VBAC and that's a vaginal birth after cesarean section to the point where they say that most women who have had a, one previous c-section would be eligible and sometimes some women who have had two C-sections wow. are even eligible. And most women who attempt a VBAC, 74% of them have, go on to have a successful vaginal birth after a cesarean. Well, I have a question because for somebody that hasn't had any children, when you read all of these, all the information out there and you talk to people, how do you go to the right resource? How do you know what is correct? And what if your right. doctor's telling you something and you go, but wait, I've heard this or right. like some of the information you gave us. How do you right. know how to decipher the right information? That's the tricky part and okay. it's lots of reading and education, but there are, there are sources like ACOG, mm -hmm. and there are different sources that are the ones that doctors are looking at. Okay. And so Cochrane Library is a wonderful resource for getting the really hardcore evidence and science behind all these procedures and practices. And we also just heard the other day that a lot of women are choosing to do midwives um, right. instead of going the traditional route in a hospital because they right. feel like it comes out better in the long run. Right. Do you see that as a trend right now as well? Yes, yes. For low-risk women, mm -hmm. a, midwife, a midwifery model of care yeah. makes a lot of sense because they tend to just let your body do what it knows how to do naturally and less intervention, and that is usually safer for moms and babies. Okay, well, let's talk about the rally today because I'm sure you're going to be giving out lots of information there yes. for people people that are watching today we and are. want to find out more. We Let's are. talk about that at Alamo Plaza. Yes, uh, the rally is taking place today at Alamo Plaza. It starts at 10. Um, we're going to be there till noon. We're going to be handing out information, 
kids are coming, we're passing out balloons, we're holding our signs, and we're just trying to raise awareness in San Antonio. And if people want to get in touch with you, because I know you're a doula and a, and a lot of people that are looking for that, especially if mm -hmm. they're going to be giving birth, I guess you can start as early as the very beginning to find a doula, right? Absolutely. Okay. Earlier the better so you can educate yourself. Explain what that is to people. What a doula too. is? Yes. A doula is somebody that helps support you informationally, physically, and emotionally during labor and birth. Okay. So we are not midwives. We're not actually assisting with the birth. We're just there to comfort you and educate you and help you advocate for yourself. All right. Well, you can advocate for yourself as well today by finding out more information by going to that rally at the Alamo Plaza from 10 until noon. Thank you, ladies, for being here and giving Thank us the information. Much. All right. We'll be back after a break right here on Fox News First. Stay with us.